In this video, we're gonna learn six incredible tips to make sure that your color grades don't suck. By the end of this video, if you follow this advice, your projects are going to look so much better. Let's do it. First things first, if you want to follow along and get some practice footage, all you have to do is click the link in the description down below and you can get all of this media, which is a variety of different lighting situations and cameras and all kinds of goodness to practice your color grading skills. When you sign up, you'll be given access to our Media Vault, which is a whole bunch of practice footage that's amazing to practice editing and color grading and fusion and all kinds of stuff. And a little ways down, there's something called color grading practice footage. That's what you want to get. Download this footage, throw it into the media pool, select all of it, right click and say create new timeline using selected clips. That'll throw it all in the timeline like this. You can switch over to the color page and bam, you're doing it. Let's get to work, shall we? Color grades that don't suck. Item one, use color management. This is something really easy to ignore, but you shouldn't ignore it. You're a bad donkey if you do. This would be so much easier if I wasn't colorblind. <laughs> Here's why. If you don't use color management and you're shooting in a log format like this, the first thing you're probably gonna say is, oh man, well, this is low contrast. We should probably do something with the contrast. And you're gonna start pushing up the contrast and everything. You're gonna get crazy. And you may or may not do a good job with that. Can you do a good job? Yes. Can you make it look amazing? For sure. Is it harder to get right and a lot more work? Uh-huh. And so instead of messing around with manually adjusting your log footage, just use color management. I have a bunch of videos on color management. There they are up there. If you want to dive deeper into this subject, but long story short, what you got to do is go down to the settings down here in the lower right, click on this settings cog, go to color management right here. And right here where it says color science, switch that to DaVinci YRGB color managed. If you're brand new to color and you're like, I just want to do the bare minimum, just leave it like that. If you want to make it slightly better in two seconds, all you have to do is uncheck automatic color management, go from SDR Rec 709 down to HDR DaVinci wide gamut intermediate and then go down and hit save. Boop. Then all you have to do for any footage that you have is tell Resolve what kind of camera you shot with, what kind of color mode you shot with. And for this color grading practice footage, we actually have it labeled for each one. So you can go to each clip, right click and say input color space and make sure you select the right color space. This one is Canon C Log 2. Boop, like that. And that should give you a pretty darn good starting point when it comes to color grading. But something to note, unless you're shooting in RAW, Resolve isn't going to automatically pick the right color space for you. You have to tell it what it is. So this one, for instance, is Sony S-Log3 Cine. Make sure we right click, input color space, Sony, Sony S-Log3 Cine, okay? So I'll let you go through all of the clips here and set up the color management. Now, when you set up your color management, it's going to give you a good starting point. It's not necessarily going to be the most beautiful image. It's going to be most like the image that you saw when you shot it. It's basically just kind of taking away the log thing. So it looks good-ish on your screen. This is step one for color grades that don't suck. Use color management because it's so much easier to get good colors when you use color management. Step two, build the right feeling. This is really important. Anytime you're adding style to an image when you're color grading, you're infusing feeling into it. So for instance, something that's a little bit more warm and a little bit more high contrast is going to feel generally a little happier and a little bit more like physically warm. That's why you'll see this kind of color grade on things that are supposed to happen in Mexico or Miami or a place that's really sunny and warm. And this feels a lot less sad, it feels kind of happier in general. So depending on how you want your project to feel, you always want your color grade to reinforce that feeling. All right. This is actually a really kind of dramatic movie. And so I might not want to pick the kind of yellowish thing unless I'm really trying to push that it's hot or it's a different location or something like that. I'm probably going to want to go for more of a cooler feel, maybe even a little bit more desaturated to kind of keep this feeling a little bit more cold and sterile. Let's take a look at shot nine kind of bring up the exposure a little bit so it's a little easier to see. We could color grade this and just bring this exposure way up. We could make this temperature a lot warmer. We could make it a little bit brighter and we see things a lot better. But if this is supposed to be kind of a scary movie that takes place at night, that's totally the wrong feeling. We don't want our movie to look like this if it's a scary movie that takes place at night. We generally want things a little bit darker. Let's take this a little bit darker. We want it a little bit cooler. So let's take that temperature down and make it a little bit cooler. It doesn't have to be totally blue, something neutral-ish, at least to where it feels kind of cold and sad, right? You gotta hit that feeling. Number three, use a look that works for 80% of your shots. The whole thing? Yeah. Let's say I have a sequence of shots here where there's a couple of cowboys talking and I wanna build a creative look of some kind 
that kind of stylizes this. Well, if I build it on this one shot and I make this really kind of complex look where I have kind of the shadows brightened and I make this a little bit warmer and a little bit more saturated and I'm changing the hue of certain colors and I'm building this really crazy look, this might work fine for this shot. Let's say that we like this kind of thing. If we go to our other shot and copy that same look over, it might not work the same. It might feel bad. Like this one looks cool. It kind of has that orange peach tones. And this one is kind of dark and kind of ugh. We don't want to create a look that's perfect for one shot, but it causes problems in a bunch of other shots. As long as your shots are well exposed and relatively well matched, you want that look to work really well for nearly all of the shots in your project. Or you might not want to do such complicated things in your look. The reason for this is because you don't want to go through, you know, eight out of 10 shots just fighting this thing where you have to like really work on this in order to make it work well and really kind of get this to look good under that look. You might as well do most of the work in your look and then kind of have that trickle down to the shots where you just have to do minimal tweaks. So yeah, don't build some complicated look that ruins half of your shots and then you have to fix all of them. Which kind of brings me to the next point, don't force a look. Let's go back to this shot here. This was shot with a certain kind of style in mind. It has certain colors that we picked for the wardrobe, certain colors that we picked for the background. And so we have a lot of kind of warm tones here. We have this warm light back here. We have a kind of a cool light here. And so this kind of lends itself to kind of a warm and cool sort of contrasty look. And if we were going to do something like that, you know, maybe we'd push up the gain a little bit. We could even go maybe into the highlights and push those a little bit warmer, take the shadows and push those a little bit cooler. And that kind of look works really well for this shot. And it looks like it was made to do that. But this doesn't work really well with, uh, let's say, like a super strong teal and orange look. You know, something where we make everything really teal and then we qualify the skin and we kind of select the skin and work just on that in order to kind of lay over this skin tone and have that kind of blockbuster look. I mean, you can do that with lots and lots of work, but it's gonna look bad. It's really, really hard to get that to look good when you didn't plan for it when you shot. And so yes, you could go through and do a whole bunch of work and rotoscoping and everything to give it that teal and orange look, but really what should have happened is we should have shot with, you know, kind of a cooler background and a warmer foreground and not have a lot of these skin tones and everything everywhere. <laughs> now that's different than say like this shot right here where the teal and orange look works really well because the only thing that's skin colored is my skin. Everything else is kind of blue. So we're kind of shooting and planning for that. Whereas this, like everything is peach colored. <laughs> Now this shot actually might work decent for that because there's already kind of blue tones everywhere and this would be a little bit easier. But again, we kind of go back to the other rule of this shot might work great for the teal and orange, but if this one's in the same sequence and it doesn't, you're gonna be fighting that the whole time and that's gonna be miserable. <laughs> And so anytime you open up a shot and you're trying to figure out kind of the style for your color grade, ideally you want to look at the style that's already there that was made on set and just kind of make that better, enhance it. So we have these kind of like yellowish green tones in the background. We have the nice skin tones here. This is nice and contrasty. And so we might do something like add a little bit of contrast here and maybe we'll do something like push around some of that green and make it a little bit warmer or something like that. But we're not making huge, huge changes here. We're just enhancing what's already there. See, we can kind of make this teal and orangish look work because he has a blue shirt. Yeah, and we might be able to do something like that. And that looks pretty good because we're not really changing it all that much. So here's before and here's after. It's just an enhanced version. You don't want to fight that footage. Number five, this is more of a specific thing. Don't clip the blacks and whites unless you want to. Unless you want to. Unless you want to. Here's what I mean by that. The absolute number one way to spot a beginner's color grade is they pump way too much contrast in it. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about where there's way too much contrast and it looks cool, sort of. It basically looks cool because there is a lot of contrast, but the actual subjects don't look good. We like high contrast things, but here's the thing. It's distracting. This right here in his beard and his kind of shiny skin, way too bright. This part is way too dark. 
this part is way too dark. There's no real big reason to crush out that detail and make everything black. It's too much. And so generally, you do want to have a good amount of contrast unless you're going for a very specific feeling that lends itself to having less contrast. But something like this, where I would push maybe a little bit of contrast in here, just so you have a good separation between the darkest parts and the brightest parts. But one of the first things I want to be doing would be taming down these bright parts on his skin. So maybe just taking this down a touch like this and kind of just toning down those bright skin tones a little bit. We might even just want to do that right where his face is, just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Depends on what you like. But generally, you want there to be information from the top to the bottom of your scope here. So you notice how none of this is just like smashed to the bottom or smashed to the top. It all kind of goes in between the top and the bottom. And there's plenty of shapes here down 128 to 0, up here between 896 and 1023. There's plenty of shapes there. And that's kind of where we want to be. But knowing that, there are situations where you might actually want to crush your blacks or your whites a little bit. It's not always wrong to do this. So for instance, these shots that were shot with a very, very dark kind of style, we could boost up this exposure a lot to where we aren't crushing out any of these blacks here. And now we have a much brighter image with a lot more information between 0 and 1023. But these are all kind of related, right? This doesn't fit with the feeling that we want to give. And we're fighting the image. We're causing problems. There's all these reasons why we don't want to do this. And so in this case, we might actually be okay with crushing out some of those blacks because think about the context. This is nighttime. And at night, you can't see everything. And so it's okay to have some stuff that just goes back into black. It's not a big deal that there isn't detail right here. It's not a big deal that there isn't detail outside of the window. It's not a big deal that there's a little detail lost there because it's in those deep shadows and this is a nighttime shot. And our subject still has good exposure and still feels good. Here in a situation like this, we might want to change our exposure and adjust it for the inside of our house and that starts to blow out the window. Is that okay? Some people will say no. I think it is okay to blow out a window sometimes because it's brighter outside than it is inside. And if the window isn't your subject, like the main thing that you're looking at, it's okay that it's a little bit brighter. It's okay that we don't see every single little detail in this windowsill because we're looking at this handsome guy right here. And so really you want to make sure that your subject has good exposure and that you're not clipping out the blacks or the whites. Again, that's kind of the reason why this isn't a good color grade is because this is the main subject that we're looking for and we're cutting out detail. You don't want to lose detail on your subject for the most part because there's not really any reason to. I mean, this looks kind of stylized, I guess, but it's more confusing and distracting than anything else. Last one, number six, match the shots. This is a big one. This is important. We've mostly been talking about a creative look here. But we want to apply this look not only to one shot, but we want it to work with all of our shots. We want all of our shots to feel like they happened at the same time, they're in the same world, they're part of the same story. We want a cohesive feel for our whole video. And so a color grade like this might work good on this shot, and we'll just copy it over to this shot here. And we could say, you know what, this shot looks good too. But when we play them back and forth, they don't really match very well. One is really dark and the other one it looks pretty good. And so what we're going to want to do is under our look, kind of match these shots a little better. So maybe I'll go over to HDR and just push up this exposure a little bit. And flipping in between the shots is a really good way to see if they match. Now that feels a lot better to me. It's a little bit bright right here. So we might be able to take out some of this exposure just to make it so his face isn't so bright and crazy right there. But that's the kind of thing that we want, is we want these to feel like they live in the same world. That usually means, except for really specific situations, that they're going to have similar exposure on their faces. There's going to be similar lighting. The backgrounds are somewhat going to match. These are two different, very different backgrounds, but like the greens back here should match with the greens back there. The yellows back here should match with the yellows back here, and so on. Same thing for this sequence where we have girls scared at night. We'll make a look here. This looks good on this shot. Does it look good for all the shots though? Well, this one actually looks a little bit green. So whether we like the green of this shot or the kind of the royal blue of this shot, we got to kind of pick one. So let's go with that green. We'll push a little bit more green into this shot to match these so that they don't feel weird together. This one also maybe needs a little bit of green, right? 
And so we can kind of make these match a little better by flipping in between them. This one maybe needs a little bit more exposure to look good. And so you wanna make sure that your shots actually match. That is a really, really distracting thing if you have a sequence of shots and one of them is way too dark or way too bright, it's gonna be a problem. But if you follow these things, if you use color management, you build the right feeling, you use a look that works for 80% of your shots, you don't force it, you don't clip the blacks and whites unless there's a specific situation, especially don't clip them on your subject, and then you match the shots together, chances are you're going to have a color grade that doesn't suck. If you wanna practice color grading, there's a link in the description to get this footage. And if you wanna learn more about color grading and resolve, I have a whole bunch of videos right there. Well, it'll teach you some goodies. Good, goodness. <laughs> it'll teach you some goodies. <laughs> I don't know what goodies is. Goodies? Maybe. Thanks for hanging with me. You're the best. <laughs>